Uh, so just a quick couple quick introductions for me and my colleagues here. So my name is Douglas Harrington. I am an admissions counselor here for Binghamton University. Um, I'm a Binghamton alum. I did graduate in 2016 and 2017 with both my bachelor's and master's respectively in business administration. So even though I'm not a Watson alum, I do work closely with the Watson College. Uh, I am their liaison. So I do work with them directly in admissions. And I've been in admissions now for about four years. So super excited to be here. I'm going to turn it over to my other colleagues to do have them do some quick introductions. And I'll start with my colleague, Craig. Hello, everybody. I'm glad you're tuning in today. My name is Craig Broccoli. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for Binghamton, but I'm based in the New York City area. I um, actually studied at Binghamton as an undergrad, similar to what Doug did, but I studied in the Watson College of Engineering for Mechanical Engineering as an undergraduate. And then I stayed on for the four plus one in business for the MBA track. Um, and I have a lot of good insight about the Watson School, but we have plenty of Watson insight today. So I'll, I'll pass it down the line, Doug. Awesome. Thanks so much, Craig. Next, I'll turn it over to Riley if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Riley. I graduated last year with my undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering, and then I stayed on for the four plus one, also in mechanical engineering. So I'll finish that up in the spring. Um, I'm a TA in the first year engineering program, um, and I've also been involved with SAE Mini Baja. Awesome. Thank you so much, Riley. Next, I'll turn it over to Peter. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Peter. Uh, I am currently a senior in mechanical engineering. Uh, I'm going to be graduating uh, all bets off at the end of this year. Um, uh, yeah, I'm currently the president of Binghamton Motorsports, which is the student group that sponsors the vehicle projects like Mini Baja that Riley mentioned. Um, and uh, yeah, we're hoping to get some nice turnout for when I'm gone next year. Awesome. Thank you so much, Peter. Appreciate it. And lastly, I'd like to turn it over to my good friend, Jordan. All right. Yeah. Hey, everybody. My name is Jordan Gagne. Um, I graduated Binghamton in 2015 from the Watson School of Engineering, uh, also mechanical engineering. So go Emmy. Um, but I work uh, right now actually for Lockheed Martin. I've been working for Lockheed Martin for five years, ever since I graduated um, in my undergrad. So yeah, good experience there. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, again, I appreciate everyone hopping on this, uh, this webinar this afternoon. Um, just one quick little uh, tip of the housekeeping things. If you do have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to put it in the Q&A functionality at the bottom of your screen. Um, that's where we'll be taking any questions where we will either get to type them out or answer them live. So if they're not answered right away, don't fret. Uh, we'll certainly try to get to as many questions as we certainly can. Um, so with that, I'm going to start sharing my screen. I'll make sure that my computer sound is shared as we do have some, some videos in the presentation and we'll get started with the presentation itself. So again, uh, we are focusing on Watson in action here at Binghamton University and certainly always love to start off with a beautiful picture of our campus. As we know, we're located in the very scenic upstate New York of the Southern Tier. Uh, we have about a thousand acres that sits up here. So I always love to highlight, you know, of course, what our campus looks like. A little bit of an agenda for this afternoon's presentation. It should be a fairly quick presentation. We should hope up rapidly, uh, hopefully wrap up around four o'clock. So a nice half hour quick presentation about Watson and about everything that they do. Um, so just quickly focusing on, you know, what, you know, the Watson students, how they identify a problem and work towards finding their solution, as well as what tools and spaces that they do have in order to help solve these problems. And of course, they want to, we want to talk about putting these new skills to the test. So with that, you know, always love to start off with everything that we've done in engineering and Watson for the past couple of years. Uh, including multi-million dollar upgrades to our spaces, which I'll get to in just a little bit. There are so many fantastic opportunities within the Watson College to kind of explore what exactly what you want to do with not only engineering, but also computer science as well, as computer science does fall within the Watson College and is just as hands-on as our engineering fields. Uh, but certainly love to highlight everything that Watson has to offer. We do have five different uh, engineering majors. We have biomedical, mechanical, industrial and systems, computer and electrical engineering. And then, like I said, we also have computer science. So just as an overview, quick overview about the curriculum itself, uh, the engineering students get to go through what we call the engineering design division, which is a, a core group of classes that all of you get to take during the same, uh, during that first year. And you actually don't decide until the end of your first year what major you're going to be. So, but that's pretty much all I'll say about the curriculum because like I said, this is more so focused on our student experiences and our alumni and focusing more so on the projects that you do get to complete during your time here at Watson. 
So lots of different projects that will happen over your four years, but some of them that we certainly love to highlight is definitely the ones that you get to do in your first year and also the ones that you get to do in your senior year. Um, so first, uh, I know a couple of the big projects that we always start off with is certainly a reverse engineering project. And uh, there's another project that, uh, Riley, you were just talking to me before the presentation had just started. Um, so if you won't mind, I'm actually going to turn it over to you uh, to talk about, um, you know, if you wouldn't mind talking about the engineering project and the other project that students get to do in their first semester or their first year, I should say, um, even though doing it from home this year due to COVID. Yes. So uh, this year we did reverse engineering still, which is usual. We start out with reverse engineering. Um, it was a little different. Every single student got their own appliance because of COVID. So they took apart computer mouses um, or game controllers. In the past, we've done things like blenders and toasters um, where a whole team shares an appliance. But you take apart the entire component, like the entire device, and you draw every single piece using um, SolidWorks this year. We have used Solid Edge in the past, but SolidWorks this year and then you reassemble it on CAD. And the second project for that semester, for, so for your fall semester, is an Arduino project. So an Arduino is like a little um, electronic programmable board um, and you uh, can make different devices. We had a fortune teller, a Simon Says game. Um, we've had a laser tag game. So every group makes a different game. Um, this year it was online, but in the past we have had students building and soldering their circuits and creating those. Awesome. That's, you know, I think it's, it's so, I mean, I find engineering so interesting. I could never do it professionally, but, um, you know, I just, everything that you get to do with, with the projects that you get to do right from the very beginning is just so great to hear those stories and hear, you know, what a student can do here at Binghamton, even right from their first day here in engineering, which is really great to hear. But of course, we also love to focus on our senior capstone projects. Um, you know, Peter, you, I, I, I listed your uh, specific senior capstone project on here, if you wouldn't mind giving a little bit of a rundown of maybe yours and maybe some other ones that maybe some of your other, your friends and, and colleagues are doing um, for their senior projects. Yeah, absolutely. Um... So the project that I'm working on right now is um, we're creating these paddle shifters. And if people don't know what those are, it's basically um, if, you, if you're driving like a manual car that has a stick shift, um, instead of having the stick and steering the wheel with two separate hands, you would just have paddles behind the steering wheel that you could flick to instantly get that shift uh, done. So we're designing those for the current formula car being designed by a uh, by being to motorsports. Um, so they can use that for competition this year. Um, there, and there's a wide variety of projects other than that, that are offered for senior capstone. Um, uh, being to motorsports has a couple of other ones, like Riley mentioned, she did the Baja car, which is like an off-roading vehicle that's meant to be like thrown on its side and on its back and everything. Um, there's a super mileage car, which gets like a thousand miles to the gallon. There's even, I think some people propose projects for designing a rocket this year, like an actual rocket that's meant to go into space. Um, so like there's, you know, if you can think of it, you know, it could be a senior project. If you can just submit that before your senior year, there's basically, well, there's almost no reason why you wouldn't be able to do it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Peter. And yeah, there's such a wide variety of, you know, if you have a problem that you have in mind that you want to solve, you want to take it to your senior project, you know, there's certainly opportunities for you to do that. And, and you're able to explore and expand your horizons in terms of doing these senior projects. And there's certainly amazing opportunities. Now, Jordan, I want to turn it over to you. Um, maybe if you could talk now, being a few years out, you, you know, we just already mentioned a little bit about a little bit uh, about our being some motorsports and everything like that with the Baja car and super mileage. Um, but I know you, when you were in school, um, your senior project was working on the go-kart. So maybe, you know, Maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, the process with that. And then uh, what was the final, there was a final test that you needed to complete, if I remember correctly, um, you know, for that go-kart, if you want to talk about, you know, your process with that. Yeah, for sure. So um, five years ago now, uh, I feel old, um, but I did the, uh, the go-kart, uh, which was a, a project that we worked with an industry sponsor, uh, Raymond Corporation. They're based out of Green, New York. And, and the basic you know, part of that project was that they supplied us with a gas powered go-kart and, and they make electrical forklifts. That's what they do. So they also supplied us with a bunch of electrical components. Um, in our project, the project charter was basically to convert that gas powered go-kart into an electric go-kart 
um, that meets or exceeds the performance specifications of what we were given. So uh, the most fun part of that project, which I have to share, right, um, is the only way to really test and, and, and understand if you meet or exceed performance is to benchmark the performance. So we got to drive this go-kart. Um, we actually took uh, the go-kart up to a parking lot uh, at, right on campus um, and set up a little course with traffic cones. Um, we, we drove it around to get things like course time, right? Just average time to complete a course. We, we mapped out the course. So we did the same course once we uh, converted to an electric uh, vehicle, right? And the other cool part, which is probably even cooler, um, is we went to a local airport uh, where we get a, a flat strip of, um, of pavement. And we did, uh, you know, uh, test to see top speed, right? Acceleration. Um, and benchmarking was the coolest thing ever. Driving a go-kart in, in both of those locations, I, I will take those memories with me um, forever. Um, but the process outside of benchmarking are, are things that I would highlight being, you know, five years out from having done it as things that I've carried with me into industry. Um, so you really see the full engineering life cycle for your capstone project, at least I did through the go-kart. Um, so we had to go through things like uh, systems requirement reviews, system design reviews, uh, preliminary design reviews, critical design reviews. And these were things that were not just Watson specific terms. I found when I went into industry working for Lockheed Martin, these were the milestones that all of my engineering projects in, in real industry were also tracking towards. So that kind of real world experience. Um, I really carried with me and I think it's been a huge part of what's propelled me through my early career path and I think it's going to continue to propel me forward. Um, but anecdotally, I guess to what you, uh, you mentioned, Doug, we had some really cool uh, uh, benchmark results. So at the end of the day, I will share, uh, I had to look this up before this meeting, um, but our gas powered go-kart, uh, two key things were top speed acceleration. So our top speed for that was about 24 miles per hour and we got there in about 10 seconds, zero to 20. Um, the electric version, uh, zero to 20 took us about, I think, 2.5 seconds, no, four seconds. I got to look that up. It was less than five seconds. Uh, and our top speed was actually 52 miles an hour. And you have not lived until you've driven, uh, driven down an airport strip at 52 miles an hour in a go-kart. So it, it's a great time. Remind me to ask you after this meeting how you got that airstrip reserved. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I probably still have the contact, so certainly, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, I saw Peter and Riley's faces light up when you mentioned going down the, <laughs> going down the airstrip, so. That's um, something we've been dreaming of doing with the formula car since we started, because, like, we, we don't know how fast it goes. We don't have enough space. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the, we, we, uh, we have a lot of, you know, the, part of the project is really reaching out to, um, you know, everybody in the local community. So in this case, we reached out to, I believe it was Tri-Cities Airport, which is a, a small local airport. Um, but, but reaching out to them and the external stakeholders, reaching out to our industry sponsors. I mean, being able to interface with customers and external people that are outside of the Watson bubble. I mean, that's the type of experiences that, that you're gonna carry with you because that's what we do in industry. So um, I will always cherish that. And I think that's really given me a, a big head start when I went into industry. So. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate it. And next, uh, I'm actually going to show, uh, show a, a quick video um, of one of our senior capstone projects that was a few years ago at this point, as long as the video loads appropriately. There it goes. Uh, so it's a quick video uh, showcasing, you know, one of our employees on campus as well.
course, just one example of uh, some of the amazing uh, senior projects and projects that you can have here at Binghamton. Now, of course, we, of course, focus on the different types of projects and the ideas that our students have. But of course, a big part is where are you going to be able to complete these projects, right? So here at Binghamton, we're very, very lucky that we uh, just completed a multi-million dollar renovation on our engineering building, which does include a couple of our fab labs, as we like to call them. And what's really nice is that we actually just finished launching a virtual reality 360 degree tour that showcases both of our fab labs. So if you just give me one second here, I'm gonna stop sharing my presentation. And uh, Riley and Peter, I might rely on you to kind of walk us through uh, what you see in the fab labs here. We did, we were supposed to have another member uh, jump on today, but unfortunately uh, I couldn't make it anymore. So I'm gonna, if that's okay, rely on you too. Um, just to kind of see, you know, you've been in these labs and O'Reilly, you were talking about you've been in these labs so much recently working on your senior project. Um, but certainly want to showcase at least this first one here. This is one of our fab labs. Um, as you can see, go check out our, if you haven't yet, our Campus 360 virtual tour, which you can find on our visit page. Um, but Peter, I see you've unmuted if you want to, if you want to yes. add something. Or, yeah. Yeah, sure. Totally. Um, yeah. So like, as you can see, like that's uh, one of the big sections of the fab lab. Um, over in that area, there's a whole bunch of machinery that the, uh, the lab technicians uh, tend to use. If you pan to the right, like if you turn it 180, like just all the way around, uh, that's, yeah, right over there. That whole area is like the technician's workspace. That's where they can make like custom parts for any of your projects. Yeah, they have um, um, mills. Um, they have a lathe back there. They have a CNC. Um, yeah. yeah. CNC was Drill a big presses. addition this year. There's a sandblaster there. We use that to like prep all of our tubing for frame fabrication. So a lot of really, really nice and new equipment that we have here. And I know I can't imagine being with motorsports, having this garage door, I can't imagine is now a really big help um, that I know it, didn't exist before. It has been one of the best things to happen <laughs> for, for most of the vehicle projects. Before we had to design our cars to get through this double doors you know they had to be that that thin which was very annoying but uh yeah um doug if you yeah if you pan over a little bit yep. more uh, i don't know if you can walk over to the other side that uh i was gonna say over near to those cars over there oh uh, over here well just to the yeah. right it's where we we build those cars so the formula ones on the ground there you can kind of see it and that picture was taken over this summer so the Baja frame is up on a table. Yeah. Yeah, and we right took next... these pictures in August. So it showcases. That's why you don't see a lot of students in these pictures because there weren't really anyone there. So, um, but yeah, certainly want to preface that. Yeah. There's also the, um, that that's the first car that we built for the undergraduate project for Formula. Uh, and right next to it is the, it's, Actually, you can't really see it. It's right behind one of the one of the saws. But um, it's a it was the new car that we would have built uh, if it weren't for COVID. Okay. So yeah, so just a really nice big open space that I know a lot of students will will utilize for their projects and everything like that. And of course, want to uh, hop across the hall here to showcase one of the other fab labs that we have here. Um, I know there's a lot of 3D printing, a lot of electrical work that happens in this lab. Um, I remember when we were here taking these pictures, there were some people working on some electrical stuff. Um, One thing that's pretty cool about that space is the freshmen get to use it a lot. We have all of our freshman sections come into that space for their um, communications course, and they actually take apart the reverse engineering projects there with the help of the shop technicians, and they can go in there at any point to use calipers um, and to work with Jim, who helps out with electronics a lot. So I know one of the goals for this renovation was to make it bigger and brighter and make it more collaborative. And I certainly think that they've accomplished that um, with all of this new wonderful space that all of our students. And I remember uh, the first time we walked through these spaces, there were non-engineering students taking advantage of, of these spaces as well, which is really great to see. So a super collaborative environment, excuse me, that I certainly love to showcase, um, especially in the, that's a little more for our students. Uh, so let me get back to the presentation real quick. Like I said, our new Fab Labs. And of course, always want to highlight our, there we are, Innovative Technologies Complex as well. 
Um, it's a newer, newer complex within the last uh, 10 years or so that has opened towards the front of our campus that does consist of four separate buildings, our smart energy building, our center of excellence, biotech building, and our engineering and science building. So lots of different labs over there uh, in regards to research, including one that I think is really cool called the Anacoic Chamber, which is one of the quietest rooms in the entire world. Um, I have been in there and it uh, gets a little creepy real quick, um, but a really great space that we have. And of course, um, we have the M. Stanley Whittingham Laboratory as well, because if you didn't know, we do have our first Nobel Prize winning professor on our campus as well. Um, he won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry last October, and we're very lucky to have him on our campus. Um, so his, his lab is over in the ITC as well. So I would recommend, uh, since we're... Uh, almost to four o'clock already, but I would recommend checking out our Campus 360 virtual tour and you can experience all those wonderful 360 degree pictures. Um, in this next video, I certainly wanna showcase is a nice video of our new Watson Engineering building um, after the renovation. So I certainly wanna highlight this as well. So you can kind of see all the wonderful improvements that have been made for our Watson College. excited to see the uh, completion of the Watson College um, a renovation that just finished up not too long ago. It's absolutely beautiful on the inside. We were one of the first people to take a tour of it, um, and it's, it's really great to see. So moving on, certainly love to talk about our Watson competes and our different competition teams that we have uh, throughout the university. Uh, as we already mentioned a little bit about our Binghamton Motorsports. And that features the Mini Baja, the Formula, and the Super Mileage car. We also have a couple other teams as well, including the Hyperloop team, which does compete, as well as the Mars Rover team, and also HackBU, which is a little bit more on the computer science side, but certainly can uh, have many different majors involved. It's a hackathon. They host a hackathon and everything like that. Now, Peter, I would love to turn it back over to you because uh, Riley had mentioned that you are the president of SAE, right? Um, so maybe you want to talk about, you know, what exactly SAE is and how you got involved in it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so SAE, just first off, it stands for the Society of Automotive and Aerospace Engineers. Um, and that kind of describes in a nutshell what we do. We build cars uh, of various uh, varieties and sizes and, you know, purposes. Um, Something we haven't really done as much in the past is uh, do projects focused on aerospace. But um, I think once this year is over and potentially things get easier, that's definitely on the short list of things to do. But anyways, um, how I got involved essentially was uh, when I came here my freshman year, uh, someone was living on my floor who was at the time the events coordinator for, uh, for SAE. And he told me about it and I was, I was sold. I went down to one of the club festivals and, uh, 
I, I met him and I met some of the other guys and they're like, you should join, you know, one of the teams. And, uh, in spring of, uh, when was it? spring of 2018, I think it was, yeah, spring of 2018, I, I tried to get onto the formula team to start working on the suspension. Um, although at that time it was still a senior project, so they weren't exactly, uh, okay with getting underclassmen involved. Um, but I got my name in at the right time because that summer they decided to take it off the project list for seniors and uh, instead open it up to undergraduates. And they were looking for people to, to be on the team and they already had my name. So uh, the rest from there, I, I basically worked on designing and building all the frames for the formula team, uh, like the actual chassis of the car. And um, yeah, right now I'm, I'm kind of running that little sub team or subsection of the of the formula car, and uh, also president. Um, and uh, SAE as a larger entity, it's it's more than just the formula car. So like Riley worked on the Baja car, which is a senior project at the moment, um, and that's depicted in two pictures right there on the slides. It's the top and the uh, middle left pictures of one of the old Baja cars. Um, there's SAE, that. I was just going to say, I think SAE is one of the most supportive environments within engineering. And I feel like everyone is so willing to help and teach each other. And there's so much learning that goes on within the community of this club and within these teams. Teams don't just stick to themselves. We all try to like help and give information to everyone. And so it's just really a great community and it's full of a lot of incredible experiences. And employers know this. As soon as you mention you're in SAE, employers' eyes light up. So there's a lot to be said about these vehicles and other hands-on projects. Absolutely. We have several alumni who can attest to the fact that whatever project they did in their undergrad, you know, is either the reason they got their job or it really helped prepare them for it. So yeah. Um, yeah. And the nice thing now is that as the club is growing, we can take more and more projects off the senior list and make them available to freshmen who are, you know, coming right into the school. Um, so if you, if you guys choose to come here, you know, definitely keep a lookout or just come down to the fab lab and uh, ask for anyone from SAE. Awesome. Thank you so much, Peter, for sharing that. And yeah, definitely want to get involved right at the beginning. There's certainly amazing opportunities for that. Um, now, before moving on to the last video, I actually want to turn it back over to Jordan real quick. Um, you know, Jordan, can you, I know you, you mentioned that you work for, for Lockheed and everything like that. Do you mind um, maybe going a little bit more in depth about the actual different types of things that you do and maybe the projects that you work on and maybe how you decided to go for Lockheed or if maybe if you did an internship or anything like that, you know, while you were a student I hear. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I actually, uh, I went, like I said, uh, Owego, New York is, is the facility I started at right, uh, right out of college. Um, I started on a contract job, uh, probably more out of necessity than anything else. Um, but I, it really has grown into a, a career path for me. Um, so, you know, what I did in Owego, New York, um, was I did a lot of uh, test equipment for different avionics components that go into aircraft. So, um, I think I alluded to the fact that I work on things like F-16, F-22, F-35, which are fighter jets. There's a combat rescue helicopter. All of the you know circuit card assemblies and different electric components that go onto the, the aircraft need to be tested first. So I was designing um, test racks and, and systems. I was also designing uh, cable harnesses, um, you know, to go between systems, um, vibrational testers, um, all things you know that I. <laughs> wouldn't have been able to do if, if it weren't for, you know, Binghamton and, 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 and the projects that I had. Not that Binghamton gave me any course in, um, you know, in how to design a test rack or a cable assembly. But, uh, you know, when I joined like the go-kart uh, project, I had no experience really on motorsports. You know, um, it's something I was always interested in, but I just, I did not have that inclination uh, going in. Um, I didn't even think I was going to get the project when I put my name in for it. Um, not only did I get the project, but I was a team lead for it. And because I was a team lead for it, I developed the skills and the confidence I needed to navigate, you know, that that uh, career path into uh, Lockheed Martin. And, you know, I, for the past two years, moved down to uh, Long Island, where I'm now working a navigation subsystem for submarines. Um, not at all like a go-kart, but again, it's just kind of, you know, I'm comfortable learning new things 
because of stretching myself through the, the capstone project and all other projects and coursework that I took at Watson. So um, I don't know if that directly answers uh, your question, Doug, but I think that's a high value uh, that Watson brings. No, absolutely. That certainly helps a lot. Thank you for answering that question. So there it goes. So it's just a quick video uh, of our uh, Binghamton Motorsports here. Well, it's just a quick video, uh, like I said, about the motorsports uh, that we have here. Um, but that kind of wraps up the main portion of the presentation. I'd love to bring Craig back in. I know he's been handling all this stuff on the back end um, with the Q&A. So I appreciate all the questions and answers that you've been, uh, or the questions that you've been putting in. I hope people have enjoyed the presentation. Um, but I'll just turn it over to Craig to see what kind of questions that we got maybe for um, some of our panelists that we have. Yes. And first off, let me just preface with, and I think this was great. Thank you, Doug. Thank you panelists for being here. And um, one, I mean, the Watson College of Engineering has five engineering majors plus computer science. And so some of those good questions come in. We highlighted a tiny portion of the many things of what you would be doing as an engineering student. A lot depends on, of course, the area of study that you go down. Uh, I mean, I know we have a lot of different senior design projects that seniors tend to be quite creative with a uh, back I'm going to date myself a little bit but when I was there as a student my senior design project was building a biodiesel fuel processor it was a student proposed project that electrical engineers and mechanical engineers all worked on and we had some environmental studies students help us with the consulting part of that which is where you'll start to see the true value at Binghamton we have an engineering college within a huge university that has a liberal arts core that there tends to be a lot of flexibility which let me lead into some of our um, questions here. And, and actually, Peter, I know you, you marked this, but can you double major at Binghamton? Short answer is yes. And you could dual degree, which is different areas of study between different schools. But Peter, do you want to add to that? I know you might have some insight or are you, are you pursuing a double yeah. yourself? I, I'm not, but I looked heavily into doing it during my freshman year because i um, uh, well, another side of my life is music. Uh, I'm a violinist on the side, and I was looking into doing a double major in music performance. Um, and to kind of uh, kill two birds with one stone, I noticed someone else asked if the Binghamton website is a good resource uh, for asking about major stuff. Uh, it definitely is, because I was able to plan out my entire four-year schedule for both majors, uh, if I were to choose that, just just based on the course recommendations on the Binghamton website and the and the Watson major website uh, in specific, um, I'd say double majoring is something that definitely depends on which engineering discipline you go into. Because when I did all the scheduling and stuff, I would have had to take like 27 credits a semester um, if I did both music and mechanical engineering, which I wasn't very interested in doing. Um, but yeah, I'd say it's definitely not impossible. I know someone else did it with computer science and music performance. Um, I know someone is doing a minor in economics on the formula team who's also mechanical engineering. You know, there's a wide range of possibilities there. Uh, I think it's a lot more feasible to minor alongside of an engineering degree because the the course load is so much like all of our courses are three credits a piece instead of four. So you're in normally one extra course than like say someone in Harper because of just the way the degrees are structured. Um, 
So it's very feasible to minor. I minored in sustainability, which was a great program to go through. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's an excellent new minor within the Watson College, uh, sustainable engineering, which is the, the world needs a lot of help there. And, and Riley, if you just stay on for just a second here with a question came in is how does the four plus one work? And I'll start quickly with this just sort of time frame. And Riley, I would like to, if you could add your insight on how you selected the one you wanted to do, um, do not worry about which four plus one master's degree basically that you want at this stage. Right now, if you're coming into Binghamton as a first year student, that's your priority, that's your focus. Come in and study and, and do well on whatever path you decide to pick by that. In engineering within your first year, you pick which area of study you want. Now, it's good to have in the back of your mind that you might want to go on and get a master's degree, especially an accelerated one. You would apply for those, generally speaking, your junior year. Sophomore year is a good time to start talking to the advisors at the graduate level about what would make the most sense? So personally, as I mentioned, I stayed and I did the four plus one in business. So I was working with the School of Management Advisors and applying for that. Riley, I know you picked engineering as your continuation. You want to share some insight on why you picked that one and how you did it? Yeah. Um, well, I just always loved the design and manufacturing side of things. So there are different concentrations within the mechanical engineering plus one track. And I believe there are concentrations within all of the plus one tracks for engineering. Um, but design and manufacturing really just like called me. I love doing that in my past internships. And that's what I wanted to pursue as a career. Um, so I, in your junior year, you apply if your GPA, I'm not sure what the cutoff is, but you have to have a certain GPA in order to have an automatic admission into the program. If you have a little bit lower GPA, you can still apply, but you have to like get a couple signatures and prove yourself as a student. And then below a certain point, we don't allow people to be automatically accepted to the plus one program, but you are eligible to take the GRE and reapply to um, like a two year master's program at Binghamton. Um, in the plus one program, so your senior year, you can take three classes that count towards, so double count. They count towards your electives in your senior year, and they also count towards your graduate degree. So finishing up your senior year, you have three 500 level courses under your belt, so you have a little bit more experience, and um, you, you get to pay undergraduate tuition on those three courses, so it's a great deal all around. Yeah, certainly a very efficient way of approaching that master's degree. And I know some of you had expressed interest in aerospace engineering or possibly another discipline within engineering that we might not specialize in at Binghamton. And that actually is a different pathway, but many students at Binghamton would consider that, meaning they might go elsewhere for that advanced degree, master's or PhD in a specific discipline. Binghamton ends up being an amazing platform for that. A lot of my good friends did go elsewhere, but those of you should probably know at this point, engineering, NCS, no matter how you look at it, is an incredibly high demand field. You're going to be confronted with those two really good options of a job offer, if you're doing things right, and maybe a grad school offer if you're out there applying. That's a good fork in the road to have, which ties into this question that says, are there, and are there many internships? And again, I'll start with this, that yeah, there are many, but th these are our students at Binghamton are out there self-pursuing these internships all over the world, frankly, but heavily concentrated in the, the New York area. Lots, a lot of the big firms are located in the New York area. They often are looking at Binghamton as a source for really good, talented students. And that's how you have that good fork in the road at the end of the day, where you have that job offer, which oftentimes comes from your internships that you did over your four years at Binghamton. And then likely if you're thinking about grad school, that grad offer. So did anybody do any internships they want to shed some light on? Um, I could talk about mine, but you're more up to date, all of you. So I'll let you do that. I'd love to share. Um, I'm so thankful for Binghamton and how they got me my internships. So my sophomore year, um, the career and alumni connections um, office brought in Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. They're located in Kittery, Maine. Um, and I attended a session with them, met um, a recruiter there, applied, and then the following summer I was hired on as an intern. So I lived up in Maine for one summer and I worked on the nuclear submarines. So those were the Virginia and Los Angeles class boats. Um, and then the next summer I traveled with the Society of Women Engineers to the SWE conference. So during my junior year. So they paid for my trip, my flight and everything out to Minnesota. Um, and I spoke to John Deere there and got hired as an intern for them. So I interned for them down in Georgia my, after my junior year. And then I interned again with them after my senior year. 
So there are a lot of opportunities and Binghamton does a great job at getting other companies to reach out, not only within New York State. So there's a lot in New York State, but also outside of New York State. And Jordan, did, did you intern first with Lockheed? And is that what ended up being your job offer? Uh, no, actually, I did not intern with Lockheed Martin. Uh, it was totally based on a, a, a momentary need, but I was going to chime in because um, actually I know um, one of my friends that would actually did the go-kart project with me. He was part of the team that would go to colleges to recruit. So from an outside looking in perspective, I know that a lot of times Lockheed Martin in particular, when there are job fairs or whatnot and they're looking for internships, they're going and they're having their intern, you know, their interviews and everything with the intent to hire or give offers on the spot. So I know Binghamton is a, is a huge recruiting source for the Owego facility. Um, so, so if you're interested in Lockheed Martin or any kind of defense uh, contractor, you know, they, they a lot of times will go and, and look for intent to hire. So you could walk into a job fair and come out with a, an internship right there. And a lot of those of you may be tuning in from New York City, where I am live, where you see all those hybrid electric buses, those are designed and built by BAE systems. I know it's, you know, a competitor of some sense is to Lockheed, but right down the road too, where there, you see a lot of that overlap. That's happening in the Binghamton area. IBM, big multinational corporation these days, was started in the Binghamton area. They still have some offices there, but we use a lot of those old facilities by we, I mean, a lot of startup engineering and design firms use a lot of those old facilities for many different new innovations these days, particularly energy storage, battery storage, um, electricity storage through batteries, um, which they're always looking for Binghamton students to bring in the talent on the internship level. All right, um, there's a, a question and I'm gonna throw it back to you as students and former students, um, the permission to use the lab and workshop space uh, for personal projects. Um, is that a possibility to your knowledge today? So the Fab Lab is typically reserved for either like Watson sponsored projects or student uh, projects hosted by organizations like Binghamton Motorsports or like Society of Mechanical Engineers, et cetera. Um, although the, the shop technicians are very friendly people and uh, they will definitely if you have something that maybe like I know a lot of my friends in the past have made like little pieces of welded uh, metal art for, you know, significant others, uh, family, you know, um, using the stuff inside of the Fab Lab and they're totally open to stuff like that. I think if you're looking to like do car repairs inside of the shop for your own car, maybe that's something else. Um, but yeah, if it's, if it's a cool project, then I think they'd definitely be on board. Yeah, and I think that gets into the core of like the Binghamton student mindset. We have really bright students, very driven students, incredibly curious students, but they're also pretty scrappy and innovative and I'd say savvy, right? If you have a personal project that you're really passionate about, get a few other students passionate about it too. Maybe get some seniors passionate about it. Make that a senior project. You can self-propose. A lot of students will self-propose senior projects. And this is how you do it as a Binghamton student. That's how you go out there in that real world, the working world, and can create waves in the industry that you enter because you understand how to work through those dynamics. So in these cases, yes, Binghamton University has a whole lot of resources and we have a lot of talented students who understand how to utilize those resources. All right. Um, I did see a question come through about which fields majors have the highest percentage of students. Is there a list with these statistics? Uh, there isn't. If we did, it would be wrong instantly after each year. It changes. So I, I would say to those of you thinking about what you might want to do, don't pick a school based on what most people would do at that school because that is probably highly variable every year. So of the five engineering majors and then plus computer science, there tends to be some level of continuity where mechanical engineering is one of the larger ones. Electrical engineering is also pretty big. These are very old historic programs. So they tend to have a lot of flexibility and popularity. Um, biomedical engineering didn't exist 30 years ago. It became bioengineering at Binghamton first and then became biomedical engineering because the industry wanted that. And that is a very quickly growing field. Computer science has been on the rise lately. Um, it's, we don't reserve set spots, right? If all of a sudden every single student picked a particular discipline, 
well, yeah, then we're out there bringing on new faculty to help build out that program in that interest. But we kind of have a general idea of what the student interests are. And yes, you can go between them if you decided that you picked one and you changed your mind and want to do another, the Watson Advising Office will work with you on the realistic pathways there. Um, and the question came in, is computer science a prestigious program at Watson? No, we actually don't care about it. No, here's the thing, look, computer science, for what it's worth uh, these days, is probably the highest paying job field out of Binghamton. That doesn't really matter in the long run if you don't like it. So prestige has very little to do with your success there. But let me be clear, we're a public university at Binghamton, meaning we do a lot of things based on what the world needs help in, right? If we're not actually able to solve some of these bigger problems, particularly as a public research university, if we're not actually providing pathways, successful pathways for our students, we don't have the money to keep those programs, right? We don't sit on a large endowment that we're just artificially funding programs for the sake of them existing for the future sake, right? So prestige to us doesn't matter. We don't need to be prestigious. We need to be good at what we do. And that's why public universities keep things around that they're good at. And in fact, what the world needs help in. CS is certainly a high demand field. No matter what CS program you look at, I would personally, I would not worry about the school. I'd worry about, is the school a good fit for you? Because if you don't do well in that program, it doesn't matter what the prestige of that program is. You're probably not that good statistic at the end of the day. Really good question. I'm not picking apart that question, but I want you to think outside the box here. Okay, so how does Binghamton help students with the curve of transferring from high school to college? Another great question. So we have a lot of first year students coming into Binghamton every year, 3000 students, a variety of different areas of study. Engineering is probably 10% or so of our incoming student body, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But the point here is that we know that all of you are coming in with a lot of talent from wherever you're coming from. That's how you get admitted to Binghamton. But you're going to be doing this in an incredibly collaborative way. And anybody wants to share on this, I remember this hitting me. Week one, I was a first year engineering student. We had a test on a Friday in our first week of classes. We had no idea what we were being tested on. It was an entry level engineering class. It was Wednesday night in the back corner of the library. We all were sitting together, passing around notes on this, the two classes we already had that week. And then the sophomores from the year ahead of us who lived across the hall from one of my classmates gave us the answers to last year's exam. You know, the exam wasn't gonna be exactly the same, but it gave us an idea, all right, this is what we're probably looking at. That's the, the, the nature at Binghamton. Everybody wants their group to succeed. So while Binghamton, yes, we have a lot of resources, academic success resources, it's really your, your fellow classmates that help you all get through that adjustment curve to a place like Bing. Yeah, if I could chime in there too. Um, yeah, so so I, I would say when I came in, I then Doug can speak to this. I do not like change. So when I was uh, you know coming in as a freshman, I I, I was scared out of my mind. Right, um, it did not take longer than a week for me to settle in to Binghamton for all the reasons you just mentioned. Uh, the one thing I wanted to poke into is the other big transition point is then coming out of senior year in the industry. And I know I I poke this a little bit um, when I was speaking before, but the things you learn, right? The skills you learn socially as well as academically, they carry you through, right? So that was another big change for me that I was terrified about going into Lockheed Martin, this big defense contractor that I'm like, you know, I, I can't, I could barely pass thermodynamics. How am I going to survive here, right? Um, but, you know, kind of what I alluded to, these projects and these other things that we had through the Watson School of Engineering, the social aspect of what I had at Binghamton, it took me all of two days at Lockheed Martin to really succeed. And, and you will surprise yourself, right, um, through those transition points because of the network that you have and you build. So if you are like me and, and change is kind of, a, you know, a scary thing, um, I, I don't want to say don't worry about it, but I mean, you will, you'll navigate your way because you have a network, you know, that's been my experience at least. If I could uh, pop in there as well, um, I think, yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely a unique type of camaraderie between engineering students, uh, especially especially at Binghamton University, um, kind of kind of like Craig said, you know, there would be nights where you know I'm studying with like a group of like four or five other people who have no idea what's going on um, for the test that's going to be happening the next day, and then um, you know, thankfully because of a well, th 
and that that's kind of uh, one of the nice things about being in a club like SAE is that there are people from every year in the major that you can talk to. Um, you know, like I would t ask my friends who are a year ahead of me, like, how did you prepare for this test? Or, you know, did this turn, did, did this project turn out as good as you expected? You know, um, there's definitely a lot of that that goes around. Um, and uh, to kind of speak to camaraderie and also answer one of the other questions that I noticed popped up. Um, my, my best friend from high school who also goes here happens to be the president of the MSA, which is the Muslim Student Association here on campus. Um, his name is Mahmoud Al-Mahdi. He, he, he just send him an email if you're gonna come here. Like he's, he's, the, he's the guy you wanna talk to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, I thank you for adding in there. That, that's the beauty again of being at Binghamton is that there's 450 clubs and organizations, which I know we were speaking a lot about the Watson College offerings, but that's the benefit of being at a university and particularly a public university where diversity isn't this thing we're trying to make up out of thin air. It's built into the 40,000 students who apply to Binghamton. We have students who come in from a hundred plus countries, all 50 states, some of the best and brightest from New York. As many of you know this, New York itself, because of the Metro New York City area is one of the most diverse areas you're ever gonna see in this world. That's built into Binghamton, and that is why we have so many different offerings. So it's irrespective of the major you pick, it's more about the university you pick here, and then that's that's your team, that's your network. You tend to mirror the world just by being a student here. Good at it, there, Peter. Go ahead, Riley. I just wanted to say that the people in the community that it just feels like home at Binghamton is what made me choose this school. If I could say like, when I was deciding, I was between Binghamton and RPI and despite RPI's like prestige, like that was mentioned before, despite all of that, I went with Binghamton because there was a community because you walked on campus and people made eye contact with you and said like, how are you doing? Like, it was just a friendly, homey environment where I didn't feel that at other universities. So if you're coming in as a freshman and you're nervous about the situation, it's just really a great environment and everyone's, Pretty much everyone is wonderful. All right. Thank you so much uh, to all of our panelists. Looks like we've just wrapped up all of our questions. So thank you for everyone for sticking on. Thank you panelists for all the insight that you were able to provide during the presentation and for sticking on longer than I told you that you had to. So uh, I appreciate that um, and all the questions that you were able to answer. Thank you, Craig, for leaving that Q&A and answering everything on the back end. To all of our prospective students out there, I really appreciate you sticking on and attending this presentation. If you do have any other further questions uh, in regards to Watson or engineering or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to our office uh, directly to myself, Craig, or our office in general. Uh, I know I had our um, our contact information uh, at the end there. Uh, I think Craig is about to put some more in the chat. Um, looks like he is typing, um, so it's certainly possible. Um, yep. So. Uh, please feel free to reach out to our office. I'll give it a, a second or two um, for, for folks to write the, the information down. Um, I'll also put my email in the chat as well if you want to email me directly. Like I said, I do work directly with our Watson College. Um, you know, I am the liaison, so I do handle. I know there's a couple transfer students on the call. Um, so if you have uh, transfer specific questions, I do work directly with them as well. So again, thank you so much for all of you for attending. Thank you, panelists, for I mean, again, your amazing insight and your great answers to your questions. I do appreciate it. And when I, to whoever's tuning in tonight, uh, have a good rest of your day, uh, whether it's morning, evening, afternoon for you, whatever it might be. Um, please enjoy the rest of your uh, Saturday. So again, thank you so much for attending and um, stay safe and have a great rest of your day. So.